Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an MSI laptop. This is an MSI GS66 Stealth model. The exact model is an 10SFS. And in this video, I'm going to take you on a step-by-step -step how you can open it up and how you can repaste, clean up the fan system, the heatsink. If yours is overheating and you, or you just want to do a simple maintenance, this video is for you. I'll leave the link for the thermal paste that we'll be using that we recommend and the higher-end thermal paste. And the tools that I'll be using again for this video. Just remember by doing a repaste cleaning, you're not going to change anything in the system. Everything's going to be left the way you had it before. So it's pretty much plug and play. Just initial, in, in when you, after servicing, you power it on, it might take up to one minute for it to boot. So don't worry about that. All right. With all that said, let's power off the laptop. Make sure it's powered off and you want to flip it upside down. This one is pretty banged up and it is kind of broken up the hinges in here. But I guess we're going to work with what we have here. It is kind of broke. All right. So down here, let's go ahead first over the tools. Tool well, number one, I highly recommend the iFixit screwdriver set as they have all the bits that you require. From this tool set, we're going to be using a Phillips number one. I purchased myself this basic set, but if you want it, you can purchase the Pro set. The Pro set will give you an opening tool, some tweezers, stuff like that. If not, just grab a guitar pick. A metal guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and cover. A pair of those straight tweezers, a black or I mean a spatula is handy to have, and again a good thermal paste. And you can use a thermal greasy extreme, or you can use an Arctic MX MX6 or MX4. I'll be using MX MX4. You can use an MX6, which is much better than this one. Or again, I will leave it the link for a different type of thermal paste that you want. That's actually really good too. I mean, those are the tiny pads is PTM. Those PTMs are really, really good, and they're a little bit expensive, but they're good too. If you don't want to apply thermal paste and stuff like that, you can get one of sheet of the PTMs, and they are really durable too. Again, everybody chooses their own, but in, this is just for maintenance. First thing first, down here, we're going to remove all the screws on the bottom cover. The screw in the front end, this is a shorter screw. So we're going to remove this short screw and we're going to keep them in a different pile. If this screw for you is the same, let me know in the comment if it's the same. But I don't know if the client opened it up and put a shorter screw or what happened here. So yeah, but the rest of the screws are the same size and height. So go ahead and start removing all of them. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps me always me to make more videos, take requests, and answer questions in the commentary. I appreciate that. All right, now that we remove all the screws, we're going to start from the front end. We're going to poke the guitar pick in between the bottom cover and the palm rest, and we're going to twist it. And you're going to hear a big click sound. Those are the clips are getting loose. Work yourself, slide it all around in the front. To the side, I'm gonna stick about one or two millimeter of the guitar pick, don't stick too much. Once you do the side and the front, you can lift it up from here with a little wiggling and it will release the rest of the cover. Take it outside, use that toothbrush to clean it up. And another important one is that one sheet of the workshop towel. And people is always asking me, Can I use that microfiber towel? I always say no. The reason is for the next one you 99% or 98% isopropolic alcohol, don't use any 70%. They have contain water, and you don't want water on your component. 98, 99%. As soon as you put an alcohol on these towels and you clean the motherboard, doesn't matter which part you clean, this will rip apart and will prevent damage on the board. So that's why I always say use the workshop towel. All right. With this on hand, we're going to get it started. First thing first, we're going to disconnect the battery by pulling this jack back or grab the cable. We can put the um, tweezers. In between, right in the tiny box in here, and help it by pulling the cable and pushing it through here towards the battery. And you can disconnect the battery right there. All right. Next, what you want to do, you want to disconnect the fan connector right in here. Don't yank on the cables in here. You want to put your tweezers on the side of the jack and you want to slide it backward. That way you can disconnect it without damaging the cable. Same thing in here. Just pull it back and leave it in one side. Same thing in here, there should be three fan connectors. There we go. Once you have these ones in here, connected, or oh, this is from the bottom casing that is broken, 
Sorry. We're gonna remove one screw on this fan on the right fan, right there, and two screws on this side. One in between the fans and one in the corner. All right, once we remove those, we are gonna remove one screw in here, one screw right there, one in the middle, there. So it should be a total of one, two, three, four, five screws that touches the X bracket on the heat sink. Go ahead and remove them. But once you remove those, simply we want to remove, grab it here evenly and bring it up. And there we have the old dried up thermal paste. I don't know, it's kind of white, but it's really dried up and it's really decolorated too. There's nothing on this GPU section. All right. To clean up the fan again, this is, a, uh, this is not a thermal pad, this is a thermal putty. The thermal putties are still kind of good, but if you want, you can grab a thermal putty. I don't have a thermal putty right here to put it on. I'll get it later on. You can just clean it up, scrub it off with the knuckle and just put a blob of thermal putty on the VRAMs, on the components in here, and that'll be done. People are always asking me, can I use a thermal paste instead of thermal putty? No, do not use a thermal paste where thermal putty goes because the thermal putty viscosity on the thermal putty is a little harder than thermal paste. In order to clean up the fan individually, to clean it up, you can just open and grab a Phillips zero, and we can remove three screws on this fan and three uh, screws on the other fan. Just remove these screws right in here. Three screws, and you can just lift up the fan and look at all this gunk and blocking the airways in here. You can take it outside and clean it out, dust it out in here. So and once you finish, you can use a toothbrush to clean it up. Same thing on the other side. You want to remove the screws in here. So there's one, two, there should be one more right in here probably. Let me double check that, remove the gaffer state. Yep, there's one more right there. So there's a three, three screws on this side and three screws on the other side. These are tiny short screws. Once you remove these screws, you can remove the fan and use a toothbrush to clean up the air vents in there and everything else. And uh, pretty much you do it as you wish. You remove these gaffer tapes in here. All right, I'm gonna take this out. So I'm gonna clean up with a toothbrush, blow some air and come back and we're gonna repaste. Come back. So now let's go ahead and grab a little bit of the workshop towel, stock it in an alcohol and we're gonna grab on the CPU and we're gonna swipe over that in a circular motion back and forward until we remove all the dried uh, thermal paste. Same thing on the GPU. Go back and forward. You don't have to go crazy cleaning the around the GPU as long as you clean the crystal die. You're more than fine. You don't need to go around it because you don't want to damage the tiny capacitors. But if you want to be really stubborn, and you can just grab a little plastic spatula and knock off those dried out capacitors gently. Don't push, force, anything like that. Let the spatula do the work. But again, this is unnecessary. And you can just wipe it over. You can use a toothbrush to clean it up. And use a dry part to do the second pass. Make sure there's no dust particle, nothing on the crystal die. Grab a second part of the towel, soak it in an alcohol. And again, wipe over the heat sink. Make sure you go circular and nice and clean. Do second pass. There we go, nice. Again, if you wanna, you can do the same thing on the VRAMs in here, clean it up. You don't have to clean up the VRAMs with the alcohol here. You can just put a thermal putty over here and put it on top. But if you want, you can actually clean it up. There's nothing wrong, but make sure you use 99%, 98% isopropylic alcohol. All right, next, what you wanna do, you wanna put one line of the thermal paste on a CPU 
um, X shape pattern on the GPU. You don't have to go smoosh it all around. The pressure I and mean, the heat will spread it over. Again, but if you want to use a PTM, you just put a PTM sheet on top and then put the heat sink over. I forgot to put the screws for the fans. So make sure you always clean the air duct for the fans. That's very, very important. People always see the fan fans, oh, it's clean, but they don't open it to clean up nicely inside. All right. Now we're going to grab the heat sink. We're going to align it. And we're going to just dump it right on top and it's going to sit nicely flush. We're going to switch back again to a Philip number one and we're going to put the screws. Remember, there's one screw by the fan in here and two screws for the fan on the other side. Once you have this one in here, now you want to go ahead and put the screw in the, between the GPU and the CPU, the one in the middle. And the rest doesn't matter which way you want to start. Doesn't matter if you can follow the numbers or just do as you wish. It's just a triangle. It will help and spread the thermal paste evenly. Well, there we go. Don't forget to plug in the fan. People always forget to plug in the fan. Just bring it over, align it, push it inside the connector. Make sure it's not covering the screw hole. Make sure the cable for the fan goes under the heat sink, not over. Once you have it in there, grab the battery connector, align it in front of the jack, and then push it inward straight. We'll tuck down the cable beside it. Double check, make sure everything is in place. This case is broken, so I'm going to just put this one over and grab the bottom cover, align it right in here, and just push down the corners. It should click in the front, the back, and that's it. And this should cover up today's video. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. This is how you can open up and repaste your MSI GS66 stealth model. Just gonna finish up putting up the bottom screws.